if you're creative, my first advice is to look for um, look for somebody in the community you can work with. Because as three artists, if you're new to the game, you don't have sparks, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the resources. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of players with lots of resources that are looking for artists. Welcome back, everybody, to another Upland Player podcast. Today, I'm sitting down with the one and only D Tech. D Tech, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for reminding. Yeah, so I really, you, we were talking before the show here, everybody, and D Tech is legitimately, I said this to him, but he's legitimately one of the most interesting people that we've had on the Upland Player podcast. So, D Tech, you are currently living in Canada. You're originally from Russia. Um, and so, Maybe let's just go through your backstory a little bit and then lead into how you discovered Upland. Cause I think a lot of players would enjoy hearing, hearing about you. Sure. Originally from Soviet union, when we left, it was still Soviet union. So, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we've been here for 30 years. My parents were circus performers and, uh, in the nineties, they joined the first, um, uh, Cirque du Soleil show. And they were, my dad was within four programs. So we traveled states and Canada and decided to stay in uh, Toronto. Very so we opened a circus school, been working until COVID hit. And then all of a sudden the circus school closed and then I'm like, oh, there's other things in the internet. So <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. So let's talk, let's talk about the circus because it's not every day you get to talk to someone who yeah. made their living and grew up in the circus. So what... Did, what, did you do different acts? What was your act specifically in the circus? The well, no, when, when my parents were in the circus, I was like a kid. Oh, so okay. Like I see. 30, 40 years ago. Sure. And so I grew up kind of in a circus. And then I did work in the Niagara Falls for two years in the circus. We brought a circus with horses and we worked there. So I was, I'm a clown in the circus. Most of the time. So oh, okay. That's, that's cool. I do. And I have my show that I do. It's a kid's show. So. And your show, it, you do a magic show, correct? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a magic clown show. It's mostly like to make yes. people laugh. Yeah, so you are an entertainer. Like, that's so cool. And your video, um, you were nominated for Designer of the Year. That's how, uh, I mean, a lot of players may know you from Genesis Week. And mm -hmm. as a part of that nomination, you sent a video because you weren't able to come in person. Yeah. And your video was hilarious. It was my favorite video that anyone sent. And when I saw it, I was like, this guy's an entertainer. This is hilarious. But fun fact, you are, you're an entertainer. Yeah. I was kind of worried because, and when, before they played the video, cause everything was seemed like a bit serious. And I was like, <laughs> who's this guy? <laughs> uh, yeah. Everybody in person. I mean, you had people laughing. It was, it was really good. So how does, how do you make that transition from entertainer, magician, uh, into Upland? So it's kind of a separate story because I've been um, my first big experience of world was World of Warcraft. So oh, I had man. like about 500 days played in that. Wow! Back in the day, and from that on, I decided to never play games like that again. <laughs> <laughs> and then about five years ago, I started playing. Um, it's like Terraria, a game, 2D game. Yeah, sure. And it was a steampunk game, and I met some people there who turned out to be professional artists and. We were actually creating, by the end, we were creating official worlds before the game closed down. Oh, wow. And I really enjoyed it because we were making our own games inside a game kind of thing. And when that died, I was like, for two years, I didn't know what to do. Like I did different projects. And then all the crypto stuff came out and the NFTs. And I was doing some NFT projects on the Ethereum chain. Hmm. And everybody recommended the Brave browser. So I opened it and I saw Upland and... Uh, as a commercial there. And I was like, Oh, that looks interesting. And I really like right away, like before opening the game, I already liked the concept with the connection to the real world, the, sure. the whole map and everything. So I was really taken by that. Yeah. What, what, uh, so when you jumped into the game, was it, was that your focus initially? Did you have any idea that you would become a creator in Upland? What was your, what was no your idea. Like? Basically, when I joined, uh, Brooklyn just came out mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, you know, properties go for 900 and I put in $99 so I don't go over the <laughs> FSA thing. And I, I, I made a big mistake. I bought over 100 FSAs mm. 
mm. and it took me a year and a half to get rid of them. Oh, because, yeah, because <laughs> of the cooldown. But back then, I didn't know, like I told you before, like I didn't know it was a multiplayer game. I thought it was a kind of like, I didn't know I could talk to other people or see them. Yeah. And I regret not putting money in because I could have bought Manhattans for $20. Oh, so was- yeah. Those were the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what, let me ask you this then, if you knew it was a multiplayer game up front, would you have still joined? Of course, mm-hmm. much, much better because four months later, I discovered Discord, that there's Upland Discord, and my mind just like blew away. One thing is the community because I had so many questions because Upland is was one of the hardest learning curves to get into, especially back in the day with no tutorials and and then everybody was so helpful. So first person I met was Uplendo, who helped me through like some questions. And it just went from there. Like I started like people were so easy to connect. Everybody was mature comparing to most games that you know you play on the internet. Yeah. And and then I, I realized like that that it's like a platform and you know it's gonna be get, getting built on everything and mostly by the community, and that just like made me so for the first time for his first year i was like making gifts mm. just like participating in the community stuff yeah and i was always afraid to touch 3d i knew how and it was a big very big learning curve so i was kind of didn't know if i had the time for it until i saw the the master builders contest came out and the first wave of voting there was a few cities with only one building in it mm. And I was like, no, I could have built that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I started, just got into Blender and right away a whole bunch of people like Lily and uh, Des Jack started helping. Mm. And uh, just lots, it, it was just without that community support, I would probably never learn it like that. Yeah, so for players that may that are watching this that don't know, Blender is what uh, players are using to create the three D objects inside of Upland. So you're you're you first jumped into it after the first Master Builders contest when it started in when the middle. Started. So I had three submissions by the uh, end. Oh, very good. And what? Tell me about that learning curve. What was that like? Oh my God, it was. They kept Lily was telling. First of all, navigating like when you never try three D, just the navigation takes like a week. And I had like a deadline to get some entries in. And then everybody was telling me, you know, when you get to baking, it's going to get it. And I had my first model, I had one day to bake it before the submissions close. Hmm. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> it just, it just, I, I was about to quit a couple of times. Sure. Like, so, <laughs> yeah, but you, you, I mean, you didn't. And as a result, you've had a ton of success since then. Yeah. Right after the contest, uh, uh, I lost everything and I was upset. And then Ben and Cheese came to me and asked if I wanted to make decor for them. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And that was another steep learning curve and uh, put a lot of hours in. And But I enjoyed it so much because you're actually you know, creating your own stuff. And that's what I sort of always wanted to do. Yeah. And you're a, cre- you're a creator. I mean, you create... An entertainer, a creator, I think they're they're the same the yeah. same thing, right? So that's that's super appealing. So since now, how like how much more advanced are you it, with creating in Blender and 3D items for Upland than when you first started? So I think since it's been a year and a couple of months, hmm. maybe a year and three months or four months, and I've created over a hundred models by now. Oh wow. <laughs> with buildings and everything, and I'm just like but the thing is, it doesn't get faster because it just gets more complex. Sure. <laughs> You're adding more detail, trying, like right now there's a master builders contest going and I'm making items for Samurai Aquatics, for Cheese's Palace, for myself. And I can't miss the contest. So <laughs> 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 it just, every, every contest is like sleepless nights. You, you just, yeah. Out of sleep wow. So what is, what is your favorite item to build? Is it map assets? Is it buildings? Is it structures? Structures, probably structures. The map passes too, but structures is the most rewarding, I think. Sure. Not as a reward for winning, but rewarding is in, it's more complex. Yeah. Uh, it's in four different layers, you know, like it, it gets to be, and then you see it in, in Upland and it's 
changed like every uh, player kind of changes the colors and makes it how they want yeah that's, no that's yeah that's super cool so what is there a style that you like a style of architect or building um, no that's another uh, uh, another cool thing about it is you go to each city and first two hours i just look at what they have and uh, it's like you, you actually learn maps yeah by upland and then you like discover the cities as you're <laughs> building yeah, so you're discovering the architecture style of different cities as you're going through this. Yeah. That's cool. So is there a city that stands out to you that is your favorite architecture style or the most unique? Um, hmm. Well, I was really shocked by uh, Buenos Aires. Mm. I was just like blown away by different, like I didn't expect that much in there, like different styles. Right now with Tokyo, I'm, I'm focusing on Tokyo. Because Samurai Aquatics and yeah. Tokyo, you know, yeah. <laughs> and again, like uh, there's traditional, there's, it's very, very hard to pick something for the city because in each city, there's just like often hundreds and sometimes thousands of years of different architecture mm. and you're just trying to get the best of it, kind of capture it. You tell me about immersion in Upland for you. Does this make Upland more immersive? Uh, or is it more technical for you now that, you know, we're, you're diving into the architecture of cities? Um, I'm literally overwhelmed by everything, you know, especially like people in Blender, we tend to focus and grind in there instead sure. of like people when they grind the game. And there's just so many events, so much going on and it's more and more. <laughs> now you, 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 we're not used to trying to funnel everything kind of and get what we want. Yeah. So... I think it's it's both it's both interesting so i'm sure someone's watching this and thinking man that sounds super cool diving into the architecture diving into map assets creating my own item what are some tips you have for someone brand new i don't know anything about blender i don't know anything about how to create an upland but i want to give me some some top tips so one of the things right now um, i'll start from far is every Every 3D artist in Upland is just busy up to here. People come to you with product, can you make this? And they want to pay. And you just you just have that have that many hours and that many hands. Yeah, wow. And there's now like first of all, there's a big community that helps. People come with questions. You you we help each other and and there's a big feedback with Upland right now. And there's the Git book, there's all the specs, there's tutorials. It's just it's all right there, right? Comparing to when we started, when <laughs> we're trying to figure out and, and how it's going to be. So right now it's much easier and it's, it, it, I don't know, it's, I welcome everybody to come in because I want to build a bigger community. Yeah. Like we have a kind of a small 3D community and it would be nice to have more people and with their ideas. Yeah, absolutely. More competition. But yeah, yeah. So step so step one, sorry. So step one would be to just check out all the resources. Yes. And now there's like uh there's UGC. We we were very upset before because UGC opened for the contest mm. and it closed and kind of the 3D community got together. Yeah. We could ask them the questions and then for the rest of the time you're like You're cut off from each other, yeah. And now there's that, there's uh, the donut where all the 3D builders come. And just in general, like you see somebody in UGC, a player, you know, if somebody's from Upland is not uh, available, people post questions if we can answer. Hmm. We answer, there's like, uh, this Jack asked me to make a tutorial. So we, I made a first tutorial, how to make a map asset. Okay. It's a bit out of dated because some yeah. of the stuff uh, changed. But I went from like creating, adjusting to Upland's, and I'm going to probably make another one later. And are those on YouTube? Yes. What is the, what is the channel for that? Um, it's this check. It's a donut channel. You can write in oh, it's, uh, it's a donut upland channel. tutorial D tech and you'll find it. Very cool. Yeah. We'll definitely, everybody watching this, we'll link that in the description below. Um, Cause yeah, I'm sure a lot of people would love to take, take a look at that. Okay. So that's, that's beginners. Now, what about, what about yourself? What is your personal, vision your personal ambition inside of upland now oh uh well well first i want to get some items actually my own items in the game like from my own factory i've been grinding to get spark <laughs> <laughs> got to 11 and i had three in the summer so it's been fast 
Very cool. So I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I kind of saw this in the long run right away. There's a few uh, people who won contest. They kind of, I, I don't know if you know, retry 88. Mm -hmm. yep. I was telling him like, take that money, put it in, make factories, make items. And he's like, no, too much work, too much waiting. Mm. So people who play in the long run in Upland, like it, it, it's rewarding. And that's, that's kind of how I like to play it. And I kind of lost where I was talking. About. Yeah. No, just your future vision of Upland. So you have a long-term vision. You want, you've created yeah. your own factories um, and want to so, have your own map assets in there. So when I won the, the Rio carnival, you know, as I work in entertainment, when I saw the carnival, I was like, this is my contest. <laughs> so in five of, out of eight models, I designed that one. Wow. And with all the money that you know shared with people and I got it together, I put it all in and build a big hub in LA with three. And now I have three approved factories and three approved showrooms. Very cool. So for map assets, cards and um, ornaments. Oh, very cool. I, I don't have any designs yet because I'm like I, I put in just map assets right now and yeah. waiting for the cards to start. So yeah. cards right now is like my favorite sort of. I said building, but cards is, is like the new next level. Yeah, what what makes it your favorite? It just card cards. First of all, I really like that you made cards first because there's so much more freedom to what you can do. Yeah. Yeah, they don't and, have to be realistic like a car does, you know. Yeah, yeah. It can do anything. And I was and it's it's a completely it's a more challenging because it's kind of like it helps you level up your skills too so i'm kind of using that whole aspect to to learn more in blender and make like better better models and uh, anyway so yeah waiting for that and uh, <laughs> very cool so map assets carts and ornaments have you dabbled in ornaments at all no no ornaments i am it's my least favorite because they're seasonal mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> so, and uh i'm kind of i'm thinking what i'm gonna do there but first <laughs> i want to get map assets because i have more experience and there's a whole bunch of people with working with ornaments right now and i have kind of like the upper hand and i have an idea of what kind of map assets like a whole set sure that i'm making and it's all for racing I just one oh bit. very cool art so i'm kind of going that that direction yeah. So let's talk about your inspiration. Then how do you, how do you decide, like, where do you get your inspiration for your designs, for your style? Let's use map assets as the example. So obviously you've decided to do racing style of map assets. Now, where do you, how do you, how do you get inspiration on the actual look and feel of each of those map assets? Oh, that, that I have, I've been like doing my, my own art for a while so oh, okay. like it's going to be technical and steampunk kind of oh i like that feel. steampunk yeah steampunk is a bit hard because of the limitations of the triangles it's low poly yeah so it's very challenging to get something you know to look technical and with lots of details while so <laughs> yeah while maintaining that that's that's cool though wow very cool all right so we're gonna see some d-tech carts in upland when that when that drops Yep. Oh, that's, that's exciting. Uh, so how about Upland base game? Like what is your strategy? So obviously you're approaching it from a creator standpoint. Mm -hmm. Are you doing anything outside of that? Like, do you have a property buying strategy? Do you have neighborhood nodes that you're building? Anything like that? So I'm one of those players who has no strategy. <laughs> Good thing I have Ben because he goes, don't FOMO. Don't don't because like a city comes out, I have like I win some prizes and he's like, wait, don't put all the money into a city. <laughs> so he kind of helped me build that hub. Like he said, look for big properties. So I'm I'm completely kind of clueless on that side of the game. Mm. And that's another example how you can play this game many different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. to me, selling and buying is is you people put their time into it. Sure. Like and you kind of have to decide what you want to do with the time. Yeah. So I, I try to avoid it because otherwise I'm going <laughs> to make mistakes. So as a player is making that decision, what type of players do you think or what type of person would enjoy creating 3D items in Upland? Oh, I don't know. A person who likes to create. Like to mm -hmm. me, like I buy properties that I like. So I kind of search and there's because people usually go for what's going to be worth more. 
very often you can get some really interesting properties which are out of like the glands. Hmm. Like in Rio, I got a whole bunch of islands. Oh, that's cool. My own islands. So yeah, I wow. Like my own kind of factory there. And uh, so I don't know. It's it's very, if you're creative, my first advice is to look for, um, look for somebody in the community you can work with. Because as three artists, if you're new to the game, you don't have sparks, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the resources. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of players with lots of resources that are looking for artists. Mm. And putting those two together is very, uh, very difficult when people are new. But now there's like uh, people say like, hey, I'm looking for 3D artists. We kind of direct them. When somebody is 3D artist, we also tell them like there's people, right? But yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think I, you make me want to go be a designer. I just don't, I don't think I have the time to learn. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a whole world. Like, I love it. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. That's how I was with like video editing, like getting to know the Adobe suite. And then you get to know the Adobe suite and you're like, well, maybe I'll try out this Final Cut Pro thing. And then you're like, oh, I don't, I don't, I can't learn a new, I can't learn a new uh, suite there. But is that what it's like with, with blender and 3d items the same i would say the learning curve was much worse because i i do videos i do photoshop like i work as a graphic designer so i do yeah. but then 3d was just like there's at first like lily was explaining to me in the first week and i i realized how bad it is because half of the terms i words i just don't understand at all what mm. they mean yeah i was literally in google like what's bake <laughs> like, cook something or you know and so the, the it's steep but then you get a hang of it it's it's very rewarding yeah because there's so much tutorials just so much you can do with it yeah whatever yeah. you have in your head as, you, yeah. as long as you have like even then you don't even have to be creative you can just copy like real stuff sure. because you're you're still creating it yeah. So you no, can be technical. Cool. So you mentioned that you played a game before that no longer exists where you were like creating games within a game, correct? Yes. B basically, it was like a 2D uh, mining game. Oh, okay. Like, ter like ter exactly like Terraria, it sounds like. It's exactly like Terraria, but they had triggers. So there's like a trigger, a player passes by, and you can program it to say something about the player. Oh, that's cool. So in the end, we ended up, uh, I organized about 20 players. And we build the for three months. We're building like a racetrack with over a thousand triggers. Wow! And then the game noticed us, and they were giving us like in-game items to hand out, you know, for prizes. And it was like a big, big thing. Yeah, that's so cool. it was. So we have we have right now for those of you watching at the time of this recording, we're in the middle of our uh, mini game challenge. Any any desire to jump in and bring in mini games into Upland, or have you pa have you passed that? point in your life the thing is like right now i'm just like i'm overwhelmed and engulfed in blender mm. a, a couple of m a month back or, or so i had an idea for um for a project and i was talking to actually somebody from the ugc about how possible it is and learn basically i'd have to start learning programming <laughs> and i'm just like <laughs> but basically the idea was maybe somebody out there will see it uh instead of cards to have um like flying cards not flying like like hoover cards sure yeah yeah and you could go off roads and you could build the racetracks with map assets or something oh that'd be cool like did you ever play the game uh f0 no so it's that so f0 is like hover carts and like you can it's crazy yeah. tracks as a result because you're hovering and yeah that's that's just, a cool idea it just to me it's like the idea of like people can in layer one in upland build the racetrack yeah in their nodes and then you can just fly through <laughs> every direction yeah that would be fun that would be way fun so someone someone who can yeah. do that do that that would be amazing so and uh, yeah, it's just, I, again, I, I looked at this, I was like, every time something like this comes out, like the, the mini games, like, oh, I want to do that. But yeah, I'm locked in the blender basement. How they no, say. I'm the same. I have so many ideas for mini games. I, I wish I knew development at all. I would, I develop a million of them. <laughs> but th that's the amazing part is in the community, there's programmers, there's yeah. 3D artists, there's just people who are good with planning in the game and, uh, and, 
I don't know. It's it, it, to me that community is something I've never seen in like 30 years of playing games. Mm. So it, it's a completely new world to me. Yeah, no, I agreed a hundred percent. Even with this mini game challenge, uh, and the, on the UGC channel, so you can dive into jump into Discord, and there's a channel set aside just for the mini games, and players are connecting different players with different skills. Um, it's really cool. It's really cool to see. So, D Tech, well, thank you for taking the time today. Uh, where can people find you? Where can they find your work? Where should they go look for you? Uh, I have a Discord channel called D Tech's Workshop. Excellent. And um, I'm with uh, UDU in MVA with the Ben and Cheese and Summer Aquatics. Very cool. Cheese Palace. Instagram, Twitter. <laughs> Excellent. And we, everyone, will link all of these links in the description below. So make sure you go check out DTEC. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hanging out. If you like this, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And let us know in the comments what you thought of this interview with DTEC. Also, please let us know who we should talk to next. DTEC, again, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Appreciate it. Everybody join else, Upland, everyone. Join Offland. Yes, absolutely. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.